How you doing, Coach? Obviously, doing well. with Connor back in the game, him and Marcel Reed have different skill sets, but both bring unique challenges to a defense. Can you kind of touch on what it's been like to coach both of these guys over the last uh, month and a half? Yeah, no, I, I think both have done a tremendous job of, of preparing, you know, and, and obviously uh, Connor working extremely hard to get himself back feeling well physically and uh, Marcel obviously starting, starting some games for us and, and really doing a nice job. And uh, I think it really comes down uh, to their preparation and, and their understanding of the game plan and, and, and what we're trying to accomplish. I think both of them have done a really, really good job of that. Uh, I think both of them and, and myself have, have learned more about each other, you know, as, as going through that process and me putting it together, us putting it together for each one of them. And, and then uh, both of them keeping a team first focus of, uh, hey, what, whatever I need to do for the team this day and this game plan and this situation, uh, attacking it and, and credit both of them in that. We'll go front row on the left side to Mark. Colin, when you were at K-State, um, you had an awful lot of success with utilizing the tight end, obviously Ben Sinnott being one of them. Mm -hmm. um, hasn't been that much so far. Is that just the way things have worked out, or is it a change in having new personnel and better wide receivers, or is that just something we may see later on? Uh, I, I think it's probably yes to all of those. I, I think it's probably a little bit of all three of those situations. Uh, uh, I think definitely maybe the style of defense. You know, I think we've seen a little more – uh, zone coverage the last couple games, but uh, you know I think some some of the coverage structures and front structures probably uh, have adapted some of those numbers. Um, you know, but but really proud of that room and, and and the tight ends have made some big plays for us and done a nice job uh, in in the run game in particular. But then uh, Theo's made some big plays and, and Trey's had some big plays. You know, the touchdown against Arkansas at, at some key times. So. Um, I, I think collectively, I mean, as a group, I think we're still a work in progress uh, for sure. Uh, have made some great strides, but um, and it'll be fun to see how we continue to evolve. We'll go back behind the lights on the right side to Ben. Uh, Colin, just what's it been like working with Terry Busty? It seemed like before the year, maybe a little bit more on defense. He's worked, obviously, with the receivers. And, and, and specifically, uh, looked like early when y'all getting them the ball, kind of jet sweeps, easy completions just to get him in space. Now. Seems like he's maybe a little more comfortable running routes down the field. Yeah, uh, first of all, just just an incredible young man. I mean, top to bottom. I mean, his his level of maturity and how he how he comes to work every day and, and attacks it and approaches it and studies. And I mean, he's up in in the offices extra all the time, trying to learn and, and watch more tape and grow. And uh, that has that, that has paid off for him and, and for us. And uh, obviously, he's got a great skill set, you know. And, and we've known. He's always had good ball skills. He's always had great athleticism and speed. But to watch his maturation as, as a route runner and, and what Coach Wiggins is, is working with him on and, and how he's improved is, has been really fun to watch. And how have you all tried to develop? Uh, you know, you guys have a lot of receiving options, and it seems like that's been a part of the offense is not exactly knowing who you guys are keying in on. How do you kind of keep doing that while also – get maybe certain guys in rhythm to where they can develop into, you know, a number one type receiver, not to have one guy, but, you know, a several yeah. guys that could be at that level. No, I, I, absolutely. I think it's, uh, there, there are certain things as, as we continue to evolve and, and, and kind of move forward to uh, strategically put those guys in personnel things to get certain people in certain spots. Um, you know, again, those are, those are very percentage based estimation sometimes based on what coverage you're going to see and, and where the ball is most likely to go but not guaranteed to go on some things um, you know but then I think that's that's also a really good number and someone told me after the game you know we had 10 different guys catch the football in our last ball game and and that's a, a credit to the entire group understanding that hey it's all of us in it together there's going to be multiple tight ends multiple receivers multiple tailbacks uh, run and, and, and catch the football and I think that is is part of what uh, is and, and will continue to make us hard to defend. So it's it's finding a mixture of both because we got to get the ball to our best players, but then uh, it's going to be by committee and, and all of us in it together too. We'll go to the left side of TV, bro, to Tyler. Yeah, Colin, how, how have you seen uh, this offense kind of develop for, and what differences do you see from maybe week one to where they are now and just how um, – is every, does everybody seem more comfortable, I guess, in this system? Uh, a absolutely. I, I think it's a, a, 
a combination of a lot of factors that I do. I think it's, uh, first of all, even just getting in from the first game, you know, it's getting in the rhythm of, of how we call it, how we operate it, how we sub, how we in and out of tempo, in and out of huddle. All of those things are, uh, although practiced very thoroughly still, hey, how do we implement those in the game in real time and getting used to that flow? Um, but but I, I think probably the biggest thing uh, collectively is, has been what our guys up front have been able to do and, and how hard those guys have worked, um, what we've been able to do and, and establish running the football up front uh, has, has kind of stabilized everything and, and given us a, a level of an attack mode, a, a level of physicality that we've been able to play off in a lot of different areas. Um, and I think that breeds consistency. I think it, 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 it settles people in and, and has allowed us to make some bigger plays down the field in the passing game and, and things. So I'd say that's probably the biggest thing that we've really settled in and been able to do. But again, like I said, I really think we're a work in progress and and, and have some, some of our best games in, in production ahead of us. We'll go second row on the left side to Alex. Yeah, I had a couple for you. You mentioned the success of the offensive line. How much of a defining moment was that 99-yard touchdown drive at Florida in the rain for the kind of the identity that this group has, has, has made itself to be? I mean, tremendous. I mean, again, you, it feels like we've uh, had, had to come off our end zone a couple times, but but that instance in particular, I mean, uh, you, you had obviously you're, you're on the road, backed up in an end zone. You got the elements of, of the rain at, at that moment in the game. It started pouring in, in difficult conditions to snap, to catch, to uh, exchange, um, and, and truly all of our guys put their nose down and said, hey, let, let's go. You know, And I think we threw maybe one or two passes, didn't complete them on that drive, but basically went 99 yards on, on runs only. And, and I think that was uh, credit, credit to our guys for sure. And this is a team that still has a lot of goals in front of itself. When, when you were a senior at Kansas State, y'all started in the 20s ranked uh, and <laughs> you know, stacked wins to you know, compete late for, for a spot. Um, you know, what, what was it about that that you can pull uh, to be able to you know, tell your guys to try and maintain success as you guys make a push this second half of the season? Yeah, no, I, I think it's it's truly a a process based mindset, and, and realizing that you know we're we're still a work in progress. It's a it's a day to day, little decision stacked on little decision basis of of who we are, and and yeah, we, we've been able to stack some wins and and, and some good weeks uh, on top of each other here, but. Uh, you know, it doesn't take long to, and with an early game, I got to see a couple games on Saturday. You know, you let up for even one second, and it doesn't matter who you play, it doesn't matter where you play them, you are in jeopardy. And so, kind of, kind of having the mindset of, hey, we, we got to come to work every single day. We got to try to get better on the little things that uh, fundamentally, schematically, and, and play as hard as we possibly can and learn how to even play harder than, than we think we can. You got to do it together, and you got to do it for the right reasons. And you know what? Let's let's line up and put that ball down, and and, and see what happens. And and if you, if we can not worry about any of that stuff and truly focus and, and legitimately do it, and not just say it, do it one step at a time, then then great things happen. We'll go second row on the right side to Carter, and then Brent. Colin uh, <clears throat> uh, Elko defended Connor on Saturday for some of the stuff had been said about him and. <clears throat> I'm just curious uh, your perspective on how Connor handled criticism and also just not being able to play the last few weeks. Yeah, I, I mean, you, you talk about a, a roller coaster of, of emotions for uh, the team, Bo both of those guys. And, and again, credit to them, credit to Connor. was very, very proud of his maturity, of his, uh, his toughness, you know, and, and uh, being able to keep his feet on the ground and, and put his nose down and try to get himself healthy. and. And, and block as much of that out as, as possible and, and keep the main thing the main thing, which is, again, as, as we talk of, of uh, team first, doing the best you, and becoming the best that you can possibly be and, and credit both he and Marcel through, uh, you know, these last couple weeks, these different games, the different situations they've both been put in, uh, they've done that, you know, and, and there was not a happier guy uh, a couple of weeks ago for Marcel than, than Connor Wigman. And then after this last week, there wasn't a bigger uh, a guy with a bigger smile on his face that gave Connor any bigger hug than, than Marcel Reed. And that that was something that um, 
uh, is, is extremely important to me. And, and I tell those guys in our first meeting at camp every year, it's like, hey, this, uh, our mission is, is to provide the level of quarterback play for this team uh, that allows us uh, to win every game that we play. And it's going to take all of us. And, and I don't know exactly what that's going to mean. I don't know exactly how that's going to go. And uh, it's important that all of us are at our best. So when our number is called, that, that they're able to answer the bell and, and block out all the dynamics or what anyone thinks or says or thinks they know about a situation or thinks they don't. And, and keep the main thing the main thing and, and credit both of those guys. We're not in the position we are in right now if, if both of those guys don't do that well. And with Le'Veon Moss, uh, is there a point maybe this offseason or maybe even early in the season where you figured that he could have the season that he's having now? And, and maybe what about his running style do you, do you really like? Oh, I, again, I, Lev's got a, a special place. I mean, he's, uh, he's just an unbelievable young man. He's got an unbelievable personality. Um, he, he just uh, and, and he runs so stinking hard. I mean, you, you got, it's like he's chewing through that bit, just wanting more, wanting more, running harder, running harder, and, and uh, proud of him. And, and that mentality is contagious with our guys. I mean, I know all those other guys on the field. I mean, they they uh, uh, strive and, and work really, really hard to block for all of our guys. But um, you know, uh, just proud of him, how he's continued to grow, how he how he's continued to grow in our offense, and allowed us to do. Uh, different things with him and and um, his practice habits are incredible I mean he like we have to dial him back in practice because he will he will uh, he, he practices the same way and that's what you do in practice shows up on the field we'll go front row on the right side to Brent and then Luke well it's a small sample size but how do coaching against SEC defenses compare to coaching against uh, big 12 defenses yeah I, um, uh, I think Football is very cyclical at times. I think the, the last cycle in the Big 12 was um, very three down, three safety based. Like that was a lot. There's there's a lot of teams that have, that have kind of been in that family of structure and family of defense um, so far. And, and what I've seen and, and watched from afar, obviously playing a lot more uh, true four two five four down man coverage. Um, type outfits is is a little bit more um, kind of what it has been. But uh, at the end of the day, it's it's uh, putting together whatever package and puzzle our guys do best and, and believe in to uh, at attack whatever you've been given. Do you, t you take that personal when Coach Bateman says Kyle Field loves defense? <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know what? I, 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 I and probably every offensive coordinator in the country, you know, love, lo love to win. And... Uh, offensive coordinator's best friend is, is a great defensive coordinator and a great pass rush, so I'm all good. <laughs> we'll go third draw on the left side to Luke and then Cease. You kind of touched on it earlier, but when you look at the success of the offense and especially like the run game this season, um, how big an impact has the offensive line had on that, on that and have you seen them progress even with uh, some injuries this season? Yeah, I, I think there, there's been a couple guys that, that have really stepped up and, and responded well when their numbers called, and, and uh, heart, you know, a couple guys that, that your just heart wrenches for them with with being able to uh, obviously not have them out there and, and getting hurt. Um, they are the tip of the spear. I mean, it starts with them up front for sure. Uh, but I'll, I'll point out and, and really excited about when you turn on the tape and as we've grown here these last couple weeks, how hard all other ten guys are working. Uh, to block down the field, and and you look at the amount of receivers that are running to get in in running to get in the play and, and, and try to spring a block, and you look at a tight end on the backside straining to uh, to whether it's get cut off or lift up through or whatever it happens to be. Like um, it, it has been it has been a collective effort, and yes, the O line has started it and they've said it, but it is it is a uh, every one of those guys across uh, on, on that field have have made it happen. We'll go front row on the left side to cease, and then Mark will wrap us up. <clears throat> My question was going to Amir Carter's about uh, Connor's mental growth or mentally from the Notre Dame game, which was his worst career game, to Saturday. How have you seen that growth during that time? Oh, I, I think it's um, – you can never just put your finger on one thing. Like it's, it's Especially at, at, at the quarterback position, there's so much that goes into it. There's so many dynamics in play, and there's so much going on around them. Um, you know, and, and, and again, I mean, I'll, uh, the, how do I say it? There, 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 there's a lot of things looking back at that game 
um, that, that obviously I would have done different, that a lot of people would have done different to help that. I think it's been a, uh, a growth period for him and me to, to know how to work together better. I think we've developed uh, better pieces and, and continuity and, and comfortability around him. And, and again, all of us just keeping our nose down uh, and, and getting better each and every day. And so who is happier Saturday, him or you? about the way he played. You know, I, again, I, I was just so proud of all of our guys and, and how we just continue to uh, take steps forward and, and improve. But uh, for, for, for him to come back and, and play the way he did, uh, so happy for him. We'll stay on that front row on the left side. To Mark, to wrap us up. We've talked a lot about the offensive line already, but you've gone, you know, it hasn't been clean. It hasn't been easy. You've had injuries to Mark Naboo, lose your center, <laughs> lose, lose another center, you know, or Reed Adams has been hurt, and there has been basically little to no drop off. Even though you've had to use the some backups, how impressed have you been with the seamless nature of that group? You know, even though you had to rotate guys in and you've been rotating right tackles all year. Yeah, no, I, I think it's a credit to again our, our culture. I think those uh, all those individuals that are that are filling those roles and, and stepping up and, and truly a. Uh, having that unselfish team first mentality of like, hey, let's uh, a need, got to step up, meet it, and, and do the best I possibly can, and, and uh, uh, very, uh, tr truly impressive.